your brother wants your attention. Mm. That's okay. Line right behind the umbrellas. If the other ushers would take the people, make a line right behind the usher, right behind the umbrellas. The ushers will stick their hands up. So we're just hanging out here till. No, I already started it. Oh, hey, there's a new song. People are crazy. It's in my library. What? Check it out. It's it's a country song. It's a country song. It's called. People are crazy. People are crazy. Mm. It says God is great, beer is good, and people are crazy. No, that's true. <laughs> Can't say how do you know beer. if beer is good? Oh, okay. She doesn't know about Can't that. Can't say part. about the beer, but the first and the last, that's true. God is good and people are crazy. Uh -huh. Right? I forgot about that one. Little question mark. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to stay a question mark. <laughs> you wanted to stay a question mark. Well, that's good. Let it stay a question mark. Because I've, I've had health. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> she had health class. <laughs> so the, there's this new song that one of Kathy's co-workers introduced her to it. Uh, it's called God is Good. And I guess the tagline in it is, I haven't listened to it yet. God is good. Beer is good. No, God is great. God is great. Beer, beer is, is good. good people, people are, are crazy. crazy. <laughs> and so faith, faith, has, faith said, well, I had health class, so I'm going to let beer remain a mystery. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, Brittany. All right, well, we got a couple people watching, and, you know, Kathy and Faith are here, and so let's pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much yes. for your goodness and your mercy and your mm -hmm. grace towards us that you help us to live lives that are pleasing to you, fully pleasing, yes. fully pleasing, yes. fully pleasing to you. Yes. We thank you, Father, that we have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, and that the eyes of our understandings are enlightened and we know yes. the hope of your calling yes. and the glorious inheritance that you have for us. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, that you are working all things together for our good because we have faith in you, we love you, and we trust you. And so we know you're working everything out good for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, last week we finished uh, going through uh, First and Second Thessalonians. And I originally was going to do, I was, I was planning on doing Romans next. <clears throat> and instead I opted for, uh, we're going to start going through First Peter. Um, you know, and again, you know, we go through all of these books uh, and we're doing them verse by verse, line by line, and we're examining what's written in the scriptures. And we're just, we're just reading it because it's important to read your Bible, to learn from it, read it, to study it. Is that going right in your face? Okay. Um, it's, it's our mosquito smoke ring thing that I helps like keep mosquitoes. You like the smoke in your face? Good well, you me. might want to tr trade places with faith then. <laughs> anyway, so we do this because it's important for us to know what the Word of God says. If we don't know what the Word of God says, then we're just going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes down the, you know, the, you know everything that comes down the pike, as they used to say. Um, and, you know, I like the old saying, if you don't, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are, you know, we are, when Jesus, when Jesus is talking, um, or Paul is talking, and they're always talking to their audience, okay? So most of the time when Jesus is talking, so like if you read the book of, of John, the majority of his conversation happens with his followers, okay? When, you know, his disciples, he's, you know, he's not, in, in, in any of those parables, when he's talking, he's sharing something. Paul specifically is writing letters to the churches that he started, Okay, so he's writing these letters to these churches and he's he's responding to questions in some cases that they have had. He is bringing correction. Um, you know, I, I like I like the church at Corinth. They're one of the most gifted churches in in probably all history. Okay, but they're condoning all kinds of wrong behaviors in the church. 
okay? And, you know, so, you know, <laughs> when, you, when you read it, these are things that he's having to deal with, um, with, with believers, right? And so one of, one, of the, one of the roles of the pastor, uh, and really the fivefold ministry, is to teach and correct and to admonish, to encourage believers. Okay, so you, you, you go to church and you should be being taught something that is scripturally based, that is pertinent to your salvation, that's pertinent to, to, to uh, your, your life as a believer, okay? Um, and Paul, Paul said that in the, in the last days that there, people would give way to doctrines of devils and deceiving spirits. And so, you know, our goal ever since we've been here at this church has maintained and been the same. To make a, a, to make a people ready for the return of the Lord. That is part of our, 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 our mission. And in fact, I mean, that is the header for our mission is, is from Luke, the book of Luke. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so, you know, that is, that is the, the purpose of, of spiritual leadership is to make people ready for the return of the Lord. Whenever that's going to be, we don't know. It's obviously it's sooner now than it was 2,000 years ago. Um, you can watch um, uh, the signs of the times, things that are happening. Um, everything that, that Jesus uh, and Paul talked about is happening. Uh, I like that meme that, you know, I, I think I've said this before. Um, you know, it's the person, you know, looking out and they're like, J this is me just trying to figure out what book of Revelation are we in. And, you know, we're not really in the book of Revelation yet. <clears throat> but uh, we are we are in that you know I mean, it, technically we're the book of Revelation okay uh, we're we are we are the, the the letters that that John wrote for Jesus to the churches you know Thyatira Phil, uh, Philadelphia and so we, we we fall into that church category of those people okay so anyway um, so let's start with first Peter um, and remember, uh, was it uh, 2 Timothy 3.16? All, all the word of God is inspired, God breathed, and it's good for doctrine, for reproving, and for teaching. Okay? So all the word of God. And this, that's Paul writing that letter. All the word of God. Now, you take into consideration, when Paul wrote... Every word of God is inspired and is good for reproving and for teaching and instructing, disciplining the, per, the, the, the follower of God. The New Testament hadn't been written. Paul was literally writing what we call the New Testament. For the most part, all these letters were gathered together and they were Paul's teachings to the church. And then you've got the gospel writers and the, what they wrote. And that becomes our New Testament. But when he's talking, he's, he's actually talking about the Old Testament. Because all scripture. And then I like, I like Peter. He said Paul's writings are hard to, are hard to understand sometimes. But they're God-breathed scripture. Okay? All right. So, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter, uh, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the, of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, uh, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, there, there's, um, there's a pilgrim is somebody who is wandering and not in their homeland, right? So the, the pilgrims, they, they left Europe because they wanted, uh, they wanted to be free from the religious government system of, of Great Britain and different, you know, because the countries in Europe all had state-sponsored religions. And, <laughs> right? That's why it's called the Church of England right? It's the Anglican church, okay? It's, it's a state-sponsored church, okay? And the church was used as propaganda for the king. Yeah. And, you know, so that's, you know, one thing we don't want to do is be a propaganda, um, which is why, you know, if, if you think that I'm wrong about something, you come to me, you tell me, and point out in scripture why you think that. Right? 
And how you wear your hair is not part of it. Huh? Oh, and how you, how you wear your hair is not part of it. I don't care how you wear your hair. You should wash it regularly. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't care what you wear. You know? You know? Anyway, all right. Okay, so, and they're in dispersion. Dispersion means that they've been pushed out. They're, they're in dispersed. They've been dispersed. Um, and, you know, he could, be, he could be writing to Christian believers that have been dispersed into different, in, in different nations. Or he could be actually referring to Jewish people from the diaspora uh, of uh, the northern kingdom. Okay? So anyway, um, so he says, You are elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. But what does that mean, elect according to the foreknowledge? That means that God looked through all time, and he saw, he saw you, he saw you, you right there, he saw you, and, and saw that, that you would receive the gospel message, and you then become elect according to his foreknowledge. It does not mean that you were selected to be saved and others weren't, okay? You are elect. Um, oftentimes, uh, the, the children of Israel are referred to as the elect. Why? Because God called them out of the nations. You're elect because God called you out of the nations to be separate, to be different. And so, you know, this is, this is his desire. It is in sanctification. Again, we've talked about that a lot in 1 Thessalonians. Sanctification is the process that we're always going through from the moment we're saved to the, to the moment that we die or Jesus comes again of us becoming more like him, okay? Yet still with your personality, still with your likes and dislikes, you know, providing that they're not, you know, you know, lawless, this. Yeah. You get in a lot of trouble for talking about lawlessness. Did you know that? Yeah. People don't like it. But really, lawlessness is just the opposite of righteousness. If you're righteous, then you're doing the things that God said, and you're following the things that God said to do. Right. <clears throat> That's all righteousness is. Okay? Every single believer has, has the Holy Spirit in them, and we have been given to our account righteousness, okay? For he who knew no sin became sin that we might become righteous, the righteousness of God in Christ. Um, in that, when Jesus died, his righteousness gets accredited to your account, okay? And the reason when we talk about that, righteousness is, how, how, do, how do you say this? I Righteous, being, having righteousness uh, given to you gives you the ability to then do righteous acts, righteously, with the righteous brothers. No, okay, not funny? It allows you to. Yes, it allows you to. It doesn't force you. No. You, you still have free will. Yeah, it, it's a choice. Yes, it's a choice. And everybody has the choice to make. And everybody, every, every believer is going to be held accountable for the choices they make. Yeah. You know, we're, we're saved. But if, if, if all of our choices lead us ultimately to just continual lawlessness and unrighteousness, then there's a question of, you know, do you need to get saved again? <laughs> my, 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 my buddy Len and I, well, you, some of you know Len. Um, when, we went, when we were at Ramah, um, they, on Thursdays and, and Tuesdays, they had, um, prayer and then they would have like assembly, general assembly and make announcements and stuff like that. And, and, you know, sometimes have a, a guest speaker and, and we're at Bible college and we laugh at this because, you know, it's funny to us, but they would always give an altar call at Bible college, you know, in case somebody wasn't saved. <clears throat> People went. <laughs> anyway, Len and I would joke, and, and he'd say, he'd, he'd say, slap me on the arm. He'd say, buddy, you better go up there and get yourself right with God. You know, or I'd tell him, Len, you better get up there. They're, they're calling for you. They're waiting for you right now, Len. Anyway, so, 
Just silliness. Anyway, for obedience, <laughs> for in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. And do we don't we need to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ. We really do need to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to make a big deal about the blood of Jesus. Because if we don't make a big deal out of it, listen, if you'll make a big deal out of the blood, the blood will make a big deal out of you. Did you know that, that God said that the blood of Abel spoke to him? and called for justice. Yep. Mm. The blood speaks. Mm. Your blood speaks. Jesus' blood speaks. Mm. Jesus' blood speaks of greater things mm. than that of Abel. It, that's what scripture says. It says, Jesus' blood speaks of greater things than that of Abel. So anyway, um, going right along, grace to you and peace be multiplied. Can you use some grace and peace be multiplied to you? Man, I can always use some grace and peace being multiplied to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, by the way, I, I did her eyebrow. So she had, you know. Oh, you did the one eyebrow. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> Verse three. <laughs> faith, faith went out and, and, and anyway, it's, it's, you don't want to hear all that. No. Verse 3, blessed be the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So you are born again. See, every person that's on this earth, you were born. Mm -hmm. you, you were born natural or you were born via cesarean. Uh, either way, you were born. You were born naturally. Mm -hmm. The second birth is the... the is this, thank you, Faith. It's the spiritual birth. It's being born again unto God spiritually. Mm -hmm. So we've been born again unto God <clears throat> to a living hope. Mm -hmm. See, in, in the Bible, hope isn't just, you know, I'm going to cross my fingers and, and hope and pray that this happens. Hope in the Bible is always an expectation. Okay? You have an expectation. Your hope mm -hmm. is your expectation of of a resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again and we're <laughs> knock my glasses off. We're all living in that hope of the resurrection because if 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 Jesus didn't die and was raised again then then we're the biggest fools. But he did, and we're not. That's right, Faith. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. You have an inheritance waiting for you. I like that part where it says, reserved in heaven for you. It's got your name on it. For Even you. for me? You like reservation, you make a I got reservation. a reservation. You got a reservation. You got, a reservation at, you got the reservation at the at the Grand California yeah. Hotel, right? Yep. They're yeah. they're opening that back up again. Mm. Um, Disneyland is opening up again. If you know, it's, it's big news apparently. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, you have to do it by reservation. Yeah, but you have to do it by reservation. Oh, heaven has you got Heaven that. is a reservation only situation too. Hallelujah. The, the, the path to heaven is narrow. You have to make a reservation. And then you've got to keep your reservation. Yeah. Amen? You've got to keep it. And you have an inheritance. Listen, it's incorruptible, which means that it's imperishable. That your, your, our inheritance that we have with him is, is incorruptible and undefiled. In other words, it's never been defiled by sin. It's never been defiled by death. Our, our inheritance that we have with him is incorruptible and undefiled. And it's there for every believer who will walk with Jesus. Amen? Amen. We've got to make him Lord. Amen. Verse 5, uh, uh, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. So your reservation that we have, and we have this reservation, are kept. 
How are we kept? Through faith for salvation. We're kept through faith for salvation to receive the inheritance that he has for us that is incorruptible and undefiled by sin and death. That's glorious. Undefiled. Yes. Undefiled. Like, untouched. untouched. I mean, hidden in a glass case, just waiting to be, just to, waiting to be handed to you. And it's, that's part of our salvation. Our salvation isn't just this life that we live here. No. What we so. do here affects everything that happens to us after we die or Jesus returns. Amen? Sorry. What? We have but one life to live. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm you can tell what generation we are because she, she said, you have but one life to live. <laughs> if you've ever watched soap operas. All right. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, well, praise the Lord, which is ready to be, relieved, be revealed in the last time. So we're coming into the last times. And everything that has been held aside for us, the glorious inheritance that we have that's incorruptible and undefiled, is waiting for us in these last times. And we're going to be the receivers of it. We're going to be the, the redeemers of it. We're going to be the ones who walk in it. We're going to be the ones. We are the ones. Amen. Who are receiving this inheritance. Yes, yes. I'm receiving this Untouched. inheritance. Amen. Untouched, undefiled inheritance. Um, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Remember, he's talking to people who are, who are not, they're not in their home. They've been scattered like sheep into the nations. And so he's reminding them, this, home, this earth, this isn't the final call for you. Listen, this is not the final call for you. Jesus. When this thing is over and this thing wraps up, well, I want to be right with Jesus. Amen. Man, I'm telling you, I, I, want, I, want, I want to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the rest that was prepared for you from before. Before, that you should walk in it. And so we're talking about salvation that you walk in. What is, what is salvation? It's not fire insurance. No, it's a great gift. And it's, it's the ability to, to become one with God and to walk with him and to walk in, in miraculous power and, and, and to walk in victory over every situation. I mean, that's what salvation is. It's being made one with God. Huh? It's like um, in Psalms 91, the ability to tread upon the lion. Yeah. Faith said, like in Psalm 91, we have the ability to tread on the, on the lion and the cobra, right? That's what that's like. Yeah, that's salvation. Um, and so they're, 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 they're grieved by the trials that they're going through. Can I tell you that going through trials is grievous? It is. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's grievous to go through trials. Nobody likes to go through it. Nobody likes to go through them, right? But Jesus did tell us we were going to have them, right? Yeah. So take joy, take comfort. He's overcome the world, yeah. all right? It's important to remember that when you're going through trials. Jesus has overcome the world. He's already overcome this situation. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can go through stuff and people can say, can say things about you and, and turn on you. And you can, just, you can just wipe it off like water off a duck's back. Mm -hmm because he has overcome it. Yeah. Verse seven, that the genuineness of your faith, listen, this is, this is what happens during trials, okay? That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the, the purpose of, of trials for the believer, if we can approach them properly, is so that we can, we can exercise our faith. See, when you exercise, when you're given an opportunity to exercise your faith, and, and listen, you exercise your faith not by just believing that you receive something, okay? That's an aspect of faith. But the, 
the genuineness of your faith having been tested by fire like like gold okay tried is that when you've gone through the fire that you've used your faith in God to get you through to the other side when if, if, if someone were to persecute you right coming come right up into your face and start land blasting you I've had people do this kind of stuff to me and they just land blast you they just I mean they they think that you need to know everything that they think about you I don't care I'm not Susie Sunshine I don't believe that everybody likes me I don't expect everybody to like me because everybody didn't like Jesus you know but the point is is that when you go through it you're using your faith and you're being established in your faith you're walking in faith by faith through the through the set through the trial through the tribulation through the persecution through whatever it is that you're going through and you keep your faith in God and you keep your faith in the Word of God so that you're constantly walking by faith mm -hmm. believing what the Word of God says well, God said this, and so I'm going to stand on that. And I listen, I say, I'm going to stand on that until I die on certain things. I'm just going to stand on it. And why am I going to do that? Because I'm not going to say that God heals some people sometimes and other people, you know, it, it's not his will. You, you, you find me one place, one place in Scripture mm -hmm. where God purposely didn't heal somebody that was seeking him for healing. Hmm? Zero. In his own hometown, Jesus could do no mighty works. Do you know why? They didn't see him as Lord. They were not, they didn't have him. They had him as the carpenter's son. They, they didn't see him as anything else other than that. And he said he could do, he could do no mighty works except heal, you know, uh, you know, basically a couple people with the cold. You know is, is what it kind of comes down to okay it's a person's faith that causes them to receive or not receive from God you have great faith you have great faith you have great faith you believe God and you're watching him and you're counting him as faithful and just to do what he said he was going to do. And for you, he is faithful and just to do what Amen. he said he was going to do. Amen? Amen. And we believe that. Amen? Amen? Okay, even though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. There's nobody here who has seen Jesus in the flesh. I mean, there are some, he, you know, he may have appeared to in a vision. I know that he's appeared to many people in a vision. But ha I, I have never sat with him at a table and been able to reach out and touch him. You we don't know him according to the flesh. Right? right. Jesus said to, to, to the disciples when he came back, he said, Blessed are you who believe having seen but blessed are those who believe having not seen and yet believe, right? Yeah. We're those that have not seen. We've not seen him, but we believe him. We have experienced him. We have, we have heard him speak to us. We've, we've, we've felt him touch us and, and change us. And, yes. you know, when, when we lost our first, our first son, uh, David Marshall, Kathy was having a really hard time and we had to, and it had only been a, a couple months and, and, you know, you, you go through a lot of emotions and, and stuff and you, you, you think that, you know, you know, there is something that you should have done different or you, you should, you know, you missed, you, you did something wrong. And Kathy was really, I, I, I was just mad. I was mad. I was mad at God. I, 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 I had a beef with God over that and it, it's, it wasn't God's fault. God doesn't do that. We live in a fallen world and we have we have bodies yeah. that have the whole human race excuse me has been under a curse for thousands of years mm -hmm. and our bodies are perfected at dying and death and and mm -hmm. and you know so kathy was having this uh, really hard time and we were at youth camp because we were youth pastors at the time 
and she just, she was having a hard time. She was, tell. Well, are you, you going to finish it for me? Because they can't hear me. I was having a hard time, and, and uh, I went and crying in the stall at the youth grant camp. Yeah, so she, she was having a hard time, and she was crying, she, so she went to the bathroom uh, at, at, at youth camp. She's During crying. Worship. During worship. Uh, in an evening service. And so she went to the bathroom, and she went to the stall, and she told the Lord, she said, I can't, I can't, I can't take, take I can't take this pain anymore. I and you can, you, I can still almost feel it, you know, I, because it, sometimes it's, it's still there, and it's still... But she, she told the Lord, she said, I can't take this pain anymore. I, I can't do this anymore. You have to remove it from me. And I told him, I said, you said in your word, cast your cares on you. My burden is easy. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I can't do this. You have to take it. I cannot do it. And how long did it take for him to take it? it like, he took it. I mean, she said, she said she came, she went in that stall one way and came out another. I did. Crying she she crying stall. crying in the bathroom stall <laughs> told the Lord you said to cast our cares on you and I can't take this anymore she cast it over on him and never looked back nope. I mean he took that pain away from her just, like just I mean just she says she's going just eye. like that just like that in the blink of an eye right okay do it for you. that's right whom having not seen you love though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory Hallelujah. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So what is what is what what then is the end of your faith? Paul said it's the salvation of your soul. What does that mean? Well, we are a spirit. We have a soul that's our mind, will, intellect and emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Kathy Kathy's soul was in pain. Yeah. And it needed healing. Yeah. It needed mm -hmm. salvation. And she took her soul before Jesus and said, heal this. <laughs> right? I mean, she put a demand on, on what he said he was going to do. And she received the end of her salvation, the saving of her soul for that, for that aspect, right? Yeah. So if, if salvation for your soul can do that, what else can, can your faith produce? What else... Because we're talking about, right, we're talking about with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith. The end, of, the end result of your faith, right, is the salvation of your soul. Mm -hmm. See, when we get born again, we still got this wrong thinking up here. Yep. You know, had, had a gal in the church and she said, well, you know, I, I, I've been prayed for several times and the Lord didn't heal me, so I've just reconciled myself that that I'm not going to get healed, that the Lord doesn't want to heal me. Yep. So she's the one person. Right? She's the one that God's not going to heal because he determined that she didn't need healing. Find a scripture. We cannot live our lives based on our feelings and our beliefs that we make up for ourselves because things don't go the way we think that they're supposed to go. Oh, there you go. That's the truth. Fickle. That's right, our feelings are fickle. And everything doesn't always go your way. Everything, everything, is, <laughs> everything is not going to go your way all the time. I can tell you I've had that week this week, okay, <laughs> where everything did not go my way. And... You know, we have to make a, a, a conscious effort and decision that we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep doing. Yeah. We're going to keep believing. We're going to keep on trusting. Yeah. And, you know, um, no, matter how no matter how long it takes. And what is it, what is it I always tell you and your brother about your feelings and your emotions? Only you can control your emotions. No one else. Only you can control your feelings and emotions. Nobody else can do that for mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We'll both sit up. <laughs> Kathy's saying, sit up, sit up. All right. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. What is the grace? It's salvation. The grace that was prophesied to come is salvation, right? Because that's what we're talking about in context here. So in this context, the grace that we're believing for is salvation. Salvation is a grace or empowerment of God to do 
what God calls you to do. I like the old saying, they say, you, where God leads, he provides. Absolutely. If he's leading you to do something, he's going to provide for it. He's going to take care of it. He's going to fund it. He's going to take care of your mission trip. He's going to take care of your business venture. If he called you into a business, if he called you to write a book, if he called you to do something, he's going to give you the grace to bring that about. And that's grace. Grace is not, you can just live however you want. Grace is the ability, excuse me, to live and, and to to, to be a Bible-believing believer and not just a church-attending Christian. There's a difference between a Bible-believing Christian and, a, and just a church-attending Christian. Am I wrong? I'm looking to Kathy just... I'm sorry. That's okay. She wasn't listening. I missed it. <laughs> I was trying to fix something on my phone. What's the difference? Well, the, the difference is, you know, you've got your, your average Christian who goes to church, and if you ask them 10 minutes after service, what did they hear? And they can't tell you. Mm -hmm. Then you've got your other believer who says, oh, it was so good, and they pull out all their notes, and they say, and when, you know, this and that, and, you know, and, and because they're, they're taking the word of God, and you, I'm not saying that you have to take notes, okay? Well, but notes. but not, not everybody takes notes. I'm just saying, but they're, they're the one who can tell you, well, you, you know, when, 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 when the pastor said this, or the, or the preacher said that, or the teacher said this, you know, it's... Um, How about people, I, I think more aptly put, there are those that hear the word and let God affect their lives and change them. Right. And then they're being changed from glory to glory. And then there are those that hear the word and look at it kind of like you're reading a nice story. Oh, that's a really good saying. But they uh, allow right. it to have work in their life. Right. I mean, therein lies the difference. Yeah, because you are actually allowing the word of God to affect you. Right. You're, you're, allow allow you're allowing the word of God to correct you, you, to change you, to to. Um, instruct you, you know, again, every word of God is good for instruction. Because it divides between bone and marrow, and it yeah. should change us from glory to glory, if we allow it to, though. It won't, yeah. He's not going to force his will. No, he's not. He's not. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, I, I read uh, from Teresa, my, 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 my sister, um, about the, the different kinds of of believers, the two, the two basic kinds of believers, there's the kind that is just kind of basically que sera, sera, whatever will be, right? And then there are those, and see, the que sera, sera, everything is, well, you know, if it's God's will, if that's what God wants, you know, if God wants this, if God doesn't want that, and that, where's faith? There's no faith in that. I mean, literally, there is no faith in whatever's going to be is going to be. Right? Put their faith they're, yeah, they're, they put their faith in whatever's going to be was going to be, right? Well, you never know. You never know with That's God. That's not knowing what, what God's heart <coughs> is on a subject, what God's thought is on a subject. That's not to know. You know, I know that there are things in life where should I go to this job, go to that job, and that you have to lean on that inward witness and the peace. And if you right. Can't, if you're not hearing it because sometimes your thoughts are so loud, Follow the peace inside. Right. Follow peace. Follow peace. Whatever whatever is loud and pushing generally is not God. Okay? What's quiet and maybe sometimes doesn't make sense is probably God. No. Because it doesn't make sense to your natural senses. Right? Right. And then the other kind of believer is the kind of believer that you are and we are. You're the kind of believer that takes the word of God, lets it change you, lets it have authority in your life, yeah. and gives you the authority through Jesus to see the end of your sal the end of your faith, the saving of your soul. That's good. So good. I'm telling you, the word of God is so good, right? Yes. Praise God. Of this salvation, the prophets we read that verse eleven, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. So the Spirit of Christ was in the prophets, right? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, was in them. The Spirit of truth was in them. 
prophesying about the salvation that would come from God. Isn't that good? It's the same spirit. There was not a different spirit at work in the Old Testament than there is now working, you know, through, through, through Paul and through you. And, you know, the, the number one thing that the Holy Spirit does through you is to teach you. Yes. That's what Jesus said. He said the comfort is going to come and he's going to teach you. And he's going to show you things. That's the number one thing the Holy Spirit does for every believer. You, you're a believer. You've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. That's a fun sound, huh? <laughs> Someone sharing their music. Yes. Yeah. Someone says, this is amazing music. Let me share it with the world. Hey, be nice. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing that the Holy Spirit does, it, it, he doesn't come for the primary purpose of you to speak in tongues. The number one purpose of the Holy Spirit is he's coming to teach you. You two stop being so silly. Well, laughter's good like medicine. Don't stop I know, laughing. laughter's good like medicine, right? We need to put on something funny tonight to watch. So yes. the, number one, the number one thing that the Holy Spirit is going to do, he's, he's coming to teach. He's going to teach you. He's going to comfort you. He's going to help you. He's going to show you things to come, right? So he's a revelatory. He's revelatory by nature, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. he the Holy Spirit is revelatory by nature. Okay. He, re excuse me. We had Steve's pizza for dinner tonight. It was really good. Yes. <laughs> Chinese. Faith had Chinese. She went out with. She went out with uh, Jessica and her mom today. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> So, because they would prophesy, and to prophesy is to speak forth the word and proclaim God's word. That's what prophecy is, okay? So, they're going forth, they're proclaiming the word of God, they're proclaiming like Isaiah did. Yeah. And, you know, like in Isaiah 53, you know, about the suffering Messiah who's going to come and he's going to suffer and die, he's going to be beaten and bruised, but it's for you that he's doing it. And so those prophets, they knew by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of Christ, that these things were going to happen. Right. But they didn't know when. But they were looking forward to it. Right. You are the manifestation of what those prophets prophesied. You are the, the incarnation of, of what they saw, of what they prophesied, and looked afar off at and didn't really understand what it was that they were seeing. They, 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 they wrote down the words, and they didn't understand it. Because they, they, you're looking to see, you know, what does this mean? When is this going to happen? It's like Daniel, right? Yeah. Reading, reading the prophecy of, of Jeremiah. He said, hey, listen, Jeremiah the prophet said we're going to be in captivity for 70 years. And then God was going to release us. Right. He said, it's been 70 years. Yeah. And he began to pray. And he set himself to pray. And after 21 days, is it 21 days? I, it was. I think it was 21 days. Um, the angel, the archangel Michael came and said, as soon as you prayed, I was sent. But the prince of Persia, which is the demonic spirit, the spirit of Antichrist, that's working in the air, that's working in the air, okay? Because yeah. everything that happens isn't God. You know, a tornado hits, they call it an act of God. God didn't send a tornado. God doesn't, God doesn't send disasters. Satan does. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Well, an act of Satan. Yeah, an act of Satan. And really, really, it's, it's all birth pangs. Here, here's, here's interesting, okay? Because you and I are made of the same earth, we're, we're made of the dirt that God made in this earth, right? Sorry. Pray for me. No, I like having you guys out here. It's fun. That same earth that is groaning in anticipation of the revealing of the sons of men, your body is groaning. Because we're made from dirt, too. Because we're made from the dirt, too. Mm -hmm. Our bodies, as we get older, <laughs> especially as we get older, they really start to go through birth pangs. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're wanting that new body. The older you get, the more excited Christians get about that new body. Yeah. Don't we? Yeah. It's the same thing. The earth is going to be made new, too. See, I, I, I believe, you know, when, when God says that the earth is going to be burned up, 
I think that's, that is a, a spiritual burning and cleansing. I don't believe that the earth is going to actually physically be burned up. I don't know. I could be wrong. Like a phoenix. Like a phoenix and reborn from the ashes. Para. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> We're a bunch of nerds over here. <laughs> anyway, back. We're in 1 Peter chapter 1. <laughs> to them it was revealed not to themselves, but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from he heaven, things which angels desire to look into. So you remember in, in, in Psalms, what is it, Psalm uh, 8? What is man that you are mindful of him, that you have made him a little lower than Elohim? Angels want to know what's all this stuff going on. Why is God doing this? They're, they're like, we didn't even know that there was an opening for, for, another, for another created being that would be closer to God than we are. I mean, that's what the angel is saying. We, we, we didn't know. We didn't, we didn't know there was this opening. Right? That's what he's that's what the angel is saying when he's asking when he's asking and he's he's questioning God, what is man that you are mindful of him, that you have made him a little lower than yourself and have given him authority over all of your creation? Listen, your authority never changed. You have authority over your situation, you have authority over your life, you have authority over your destiny, you have a you have a you have the ultimate authority over your eternity. Right? You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, man, and you just work with him and, and get, in, get into his word because Jesus is the same as his word. What? Jesus, the word was in the beginning, right? And the word was God and the word was with God. Jesus is the word of God manifested. So Jesus isn't different than, than the Bible. Jesus is just the whole Bible. Right? He is the word of God. Okay? Um, and so here, here Peter is writing, he says that these, these prophets, they weren't, they weren't prophesying these things for themselves. They were prophesying them for us so that we could understand them at the time of the manifestation of, of the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. So those things were written so that Peter and Paul and those living at the time could read them and say, this is, this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel, right? I like that song. You know that song? This, uh, anyway, verse 13. Therefore, gird up your loin, the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We're going back now. We're going back. Uh, verse 9 says, um, you have, well, you've got this joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay? So your mind and your soul are the same thing. Okay? Your, your mind, your soul, is not the gray matter. God just uses that gray matter mm -hmm. to conduct the thought process of the soul. So you get, you get the word of God up here in this gray matter. You get that thing renewed, and it's renewing your soul, your mind. Okay? And so um, <clears throat> when he says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, you know, gird yourself up. Pull up your pants. That's kind of what he's saying. He's saying, pull up your pants, right? Get, 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 this, get this going. Pull up your pants. Get your mind right. Okay? Be sober. What does that mean? It means... It means don't be drunk with every thought and every, every, see, we're supposed to take, Paul said, taking, taking captivity, every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I talked about this on Sunday. I got flack for that. Listen, we need to get this in agreement with this. When we get this in agreement with this, then this is going to start working the way it's supposed to. And you're going to start thinking and acting like, like a true child of God. Because it's, it's going to get in you, and it's going to affect you, and it's going to change your way of thinking. It's going to change your way of acting. It's going to change your way of behavior. When, when somebody says something that's offensive, you're just going to let it go. Why? I don't have time for that. No. I, got, I, I, got, 
I got my mind renewed. Amen. You know, listen, when somebody says, you know, things about you or talks about you, when you're a mature believer, you don't care. You don't care what the media says. You don't, listen, you just don't care. And it's not because you don't like people. It's because you know, you know you and you know who is in you. Amen. And he is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. And you've got, you've got your mind renewed. Your mind is renewed to the things of God. Your mind is renewed to the word of God. So when bad stuff happens, you say, well, I don't know what, how, how this is going to turn around, but I do know that I put my faith in God and I know that he's going to cause this to work out for my good because I love him and I trust him and I'm called according to his purpose. Amen. Right? Amen. Um, as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. So what does that mean? It means... You have, you, you're renewed, right? You, you are obedient children, obedient to the word of the Father. We're, when we're obedient children, we're obedient to the word of the Father, which is this written word, okay? We're obedient to his word. And what does it say? And not conforming yourselves to how you were beforehand. And just, you know, well, I, I used to believe this, but then I, I read in the Bible where it said that that's wrong, so I stopped doing it, right? And maybe sometimes it takes days or months, years even, for us to fully, comp, for, for us to fully comprehend, comprehend not, not really to fully comprehend, but to, to really fully um, engage and to fully be changed because we can have layers and layers and layers and layers of wrong thinking. And, you know, we can get rid of one layer and then God says, okay, I'm going to give you a break, but then we're going to start working on this other layer right. over here mm -hmm. that's also contributing to, to some of the problems that you're having in this area. And so, see, he's working on different areas in our hearts, in our minds, right? He's working in different areas through his word, by his spirit, he's working in our minds. Amen. And that, so we're, we're girding up our loins. To gird up means to, I mean, you're getting that thing tightened up. You're lacing up. I, I think of um, like Gone with the Wind, which is now apparently um, bad. And they can't show it on HBO anymore. I, anyway, it, anyway, but you know, when they're, they're, they're seen and they're, you know, they're, they're pulling the girdles and the women can't, can hardly breathe. I mean, come on. I mean, they're tightening that thing up and they're going to give them exactly the right figure because that's what that girdle does. It pushes everything up and everything down. It gives you a waist like this. All right? So they're girding up, girding up your mind. So you're, 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 you're reinforcing the stability that's there. You're reinforcing the, the strength in your mind that comes from the Word of God. And that's a never-ending process. We are all going through it. I wouldn't say we all are because some people actually don't want to change. They they like they like just you know the status quo. I'm a Christian, I go to church and you know for them, I mean you can sit with some people as, as a pastor and I can tell I can tell I can tell if if these are are mature or immature believers based on how much they talk about the Bible. That's good. Come on. There are some people that are that are babies as far as time spent being saved that are hungrier and more desirous of the word of God and change and getting to know the scriptures than there are. I, I, I remember, um, and I, I don't like to pick on people and I'm, I'm not really picking on anybody, but um, it's just an example. Um, at the church where Kathy and I were at when we met, uh, I had invited an older couple to come do something, and they said, oh, no, we don't do that. That's for the young people. It was, a, you know, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what it was. But listen, we're never so mature in God that we don't continue to grow in God. Right. That's my point, okay? We're always going to be growing in God. Always, always, always. And that's the thing. God knows that it's going to take us some time to conform and to, to get everything right all the time, right. right? Okay. But that's what grace is for. Okay.
But he also called you. But as he, blah, blah, blah. but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. So I got in trouble because I said people should be holy in all their conduct, including their voting. You know, people don't like to hear that. Ah, uh, Kathy says, "Are you going to meddle, honey? I am always meddling somewhere, okay? And and why? Because people need to hear the truth. What is the number one responsibility of a pastor? Tell the truth. To tell the truth. To teach people. To be a teacher. To teach and to lead and to exhort and to comfort people. And you know, if a pastor is just if pastors are just giving you good fluffy words that make you feel good all the time and never make you think, right. is that a real pastor? Mm. I mean, w Jeremiah, I think it's 30, 31 or 33, says, God said through Jeremiah, he said, a day is coming, I'm going to give you pastors after my own heart. God was always teaching, God was always correcting, God was always comforting. That's the role of a shepherd, a pastor, mm -hmm. is to teach, to exhort. Again, we can go over there to 2 Timothy 3.16. Every word of God is good for teaching and exhorting. Here, let's go look at that. What time is it? It is 7.25. We have five more minutes. Kathy, Kathy and Faith are flashing the five more minute sign. Okay, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given... <clears throat> All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Right? In righteousness. What is scripture supposed to be used for? To help people learn how to be righteous. That's what the scripture's for. Mm -hmm. See, we, you weren't born knowing how to be righteous. No. You were born knowing how to cry to get your way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, can I just say, that people look like they've grown out of that. Mm -hmm. But they haven't. They look like they have that's why Paul said, mm -hmm. that's why Paul said that they heap up for themselves teachers to tickle their ears. Verse 17 says that the man or the woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. See, we're called to good works. You and I, believers, we're called for good works, right? We're called to, to, to receive the word of God for what? For doctrine, for reproof, that's, that's discipline, right? For correction, again, discipline. For instruction, again, discipline. The word of God is suppo we're supposed to be disciplined by the word of God so that we we become more like God. And someone's going, oh, you mean to say you want no, no, we can't be. Yes, yes, read John 17. Read John 15. Come on. Man was created in the image of God, in the likeness of God. God created the man and woman. We, you are created in the image of God. The fall took so much of that away from us. But God, who is rich in mercy, who is rich in mercy, <laughs> sent us Jesus Amen. and left us with the Holy Spirit Amen. so that we could, we, could, we could become complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So you're called to good works, called to good works, works of righteousness, mm -hmm. works of faith, mm -hmm. not works of lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Listen, what you lend yourself to is who you really are. So whatever you're lending yourself to all the time, that's what you really are. That's, that's the kind of person you really are. And you're either, you're either lawless or righteous or somewhere in between. But as believers, we ought to be always on that scale, moving further, further and further away from mm -hmm. lawless and closer and closer to righteousness all the time. Go positive, not negative. Right? Go positive, not negative. 
Amen? Amen. Go positive, not negative. Negative. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for this time together tonight. Yes. Um, and we thank you for your word, which is able to, to strengthen us and help us and change us and cause us to grow and to, to be sanctified, holy, set apart, part of the elect mm -hmm. that we grow in you and grow in our knowledge of you and grow in our, our love one for another. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. God bless you. I love you. You have an amazing night. You are loved. You are loved. Yeah, you, 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 you're all loved. I love you. Good night. Good night.